This video is going to deal with grouping or bussing signals within the analog discovery to waveforms software. Uh, sometimes this is important. Uh, it groups information together so it's easy to interpret. Other times you can't uh, achieve something without grouping or bussing the signals together. So we're going to do this all online this time. The first thing we have to do is generate some patterns that we'll use. So we're going to go to the pattern generator software. I'll click on that. It'll open up this window. And I want to create a set of binary counter input waveforms. Uh, these are great for exercising all possible combinations of uh, inputs for ICs. So I'm going to add three channels. Uh, as we know, uh, previously, if you're going to create custom signals, um, multiple signals, and you want to have two related to each other, like you want the one signal to go high halfway after the time that the other one goes low, um, you have to create them in a bus or a group. So I'm going to uh, click the add channels and I'm going to add a bus. And in this case, I'm going to shift select. Uh, D0, D1, and D2, and add those uh, to our signal level. I'm going to change those to push pulls because we're going to apply those to TTL ICs. And I'm going to use the pull down and select a binary counter set of waveforms. And you'll notice that over on the right hand side, I've created my signals. And on the top, uh, because it's a bus, it has grouped these together and put that information, in this case, in decimal form. I could come over here to the detail window and edit this and change the format to hexadecimal, to ones complement, to BCD, to ASCII, whatever you want it to be. In this case, um, decimal works for me. So I've created these patterns, and now I'm going to fire them up and start them running. And then I'm going to go to my real point is um, when I go to look at these signals on the logic analyzer. So I have choices here. And the first choice I'm going to do is add three signals. Um, and I'm going to only look at the inputs and not the outputs. So I'm going to select um, D0, D1, and D2. I'm going to shift select these again. I could do them individually. Um, and I'm going to be there. And I'm also going to change these to trigger on low signals. So a count of zero is going to trigger this. And that's going to end up right at this trigger position. And if I click single, um, you'll notice I got a set of signals. Now, if I want to see, if I want to condense them a little bit, if I want to see more in there, I could do five milliseconds per division. And I can see that I have counter waveforms. If I want to interpret the count or look at at any particular time what's happening here, I have to look at all the three signals separately. And that takes a little bit of effort. And when you're a troubleshooter um, on real systems, you might have 16 address lines or 32 address lines and 16 data lines. And if you can group those together and look at them as hexadecimal or decimal values or ASCII values, it's much easier to interpret and sometimes to troubleshoot. So I'm going to get rid of these signals. I'm going to remove all three of these signals. And I'm going to add them again, but I'm going to create a bus this time. And I'm going to select the same set of signals, uh, 0, 1, and 2. And I'm going to add those, and they're going to show up on the top this time with a summary. In this case, it's a decimal summary of the values that are there. So I can see at this point where I put my cursor right now, um, the least significant bit is zero. The next most significant bit is zero. And this bit is a zero, which is gonna give me a decimal zero. And then one, two, three, it's a counter. And it's a, a three bit counter. So it's gonna count zero to seven in decimal and then start over again at zero. Uh, that's a count of eight. And you'll notice that these additions at the top, just by grouping these together or but creating a bus, has created that summary for me. Now, some other things that you might want to do with the bus is if you can come in here and say, uh, 
you can change the name of it. So I can call that a counter output. And I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice now that that's more useful for me. One thing that you can't do is you can't change the individual names of uh, each of the signals within a bus. I wish you could do that, but you can't. And it's, uh, I don't know, not a great thing. I'm not going to die because I, I can't do it. Um, the other thing that you might want to know uh, that you do, if you click on this little uh, box here, um, you can change the values around a little bit. So we could change these to uh, show hexadecimal values. And by the way, sometimes um, these get a little jammed in here and they're hard to see. Uh, the representation, like if I put binary up there, you might not be able to see it until the signals are spread out a little bit more on the time base. Um, so those are some of the issues that you have to get around and work with. But you can see the hexadecimal value of 4 here is much easier to read than trying to interpret all three signals at one time. So we're not changing the data. We're not uh, changing how we... Um, collect the data or, or do the samples. What we're doing is how we represent it and how we group these signals together. Uh, when I work with students uh, that are new, I always say to them, only group the signals when it makes sense and don't group the signals when it doesn't make sense. And they seem to get that for a little bit and forget it. And then maybe come back to it after I mention it to them three more times. Uh, only you can uh, figure out when grouping signals together and not having to interpret them as three separate signals as in this case, but looking at the, the data values that represent it in hexadecimal or decimal, only you can determine when that's uh, available and do that. Uh, definitely as I'm training you, I'm going to tell you I think this is a better situation where it's easier um, to interpret the data that way. So that gives you a little bit of an introduction to grouping signals within Waveform's uh, software and working with it in the logic analyzer in the pattern generator.